Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a CSS roller effect. If you look at the three images we have here on the screen, notice that when I hover over them with my mouse, they transition. The first two, the Twitter and the Facebook, transition from a light grey to a slightly dark grey and then full colour. You may not notice the dark grey as it does transition very quickly. You might see it more when I move the mouse off of the image and as it fades back to the lighter image you may catch it. The third image, the YouTube icon, is using just a cut down version of the CSS effect I'm going to show you. The Facebook and the Twitter images use CSS sprites. If you don't know what a CSS sprite is, feel free to google it and have a look. But essentially it's an image similar to this one where we have two different states of the image we want to use. The top state being the desaturated grey version of the Twitter uh, icon and the bottom state being the full colour version. When we hover over it we shift the positioning of the background image that we've set so that it shows a different state of that image. Whereas the YouTube image we're actually just using the CSS opacity style to set the initial the initial uh, state the initial opac opacity level sorry of the image to 50% and then when we hover over it we set it to 100% and we have some CSS transitioning which helps to animate that opacity styling so that it takes a, a half a second to shift I'll show you the code for it now. We'll start off with the HTML. The HTML for this is relatively quite simple and really you only need to focus on these six, seven lines here. As you can see we have an unordered list within the social div with list elements having unique IDs, the first one being Facebook, the second representing Twitter, and the third YouTube. Within those we have an ahrf tag which links to our chosen social networking site or to wherever you want. The styling is actually applied to the a-link here inside with everything else acting as more of a container rather than actually producing any form of image or, or effect. I'll give you a moment now if you want to pause the video to copy down the code. Again, you really only need to focus on these seven lines here. The rest of it you don't necessarily have to worry about. We'll have a look at the CSS now. The CSS for this is relatively straightforward, although they may look like there's a fair amount for the styling. It really is relatively straightforward. We'll scroll up. The top of my CSS document I've just reset the margin and padding to zero pixels. The background, I've set a colour, which is that light grey. I've set the wrapper with an automatic margin to centre it in the middle of the page with a width of 540 pixels just to push all those images into the centre there. And I've put a position relative and I've put a and I've set it so that the social div containing those images will appear 150 pixels from the top of the page. The elements you really want to focus on are these. I'll scroll up to the top. The social list element, we have a float left which basically allows us to position each list element image next to one another. In this example we don't need to worry about clearing this float, however if, you need, if you're placing this on a site which has columns, a sidebar perhaps, you will want to use this CSS style. Now you could create one called clear or clear fix is a common value and you'd want to enter in clear both if you're using a right and left common uh, columns or you could just do clear left but for best practice for safety sake even you can just use clear both however we don't need to use that in this tutorial but again if you are using it with a template or CMS like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal that does use a sidebar you will need to clear 
the you'll need to clear this after the HTML and you would place that after the social wrapper here. So div class oh, div class clear fix. I'll just show you that, that hasn't affected our there we go. So that hasn't affected oh don't want to go to YouTube. That hasn't affected our rollover images. But we've added in for good measure. Right, going back to the CSS styling. The next area you want to make sure you include is this, the social A uh, styling, which is display block. This ensures that our images are shown correctly on the page before we hover over them and afterwards as well. Then we move on to the unique styling for each. I'm only going to talk you through um, the Facebook one in detail because it is a direct copy for each one that you want to use this effect on. The top, the first tag we want to use is the ID of your list item element with the A, sim, the A tag after it. We then want to set a background URL of the image we want to use and we want to position it with a zero uh, horizontal height, uh, uh, sorry, yes, zero horizontal positioning, sorry, and a, a zero vertical positioning as well. This ensures that we're shown the top portion of our image. By setting a width and height we ensure that we only see the part of the image we want to and again remember as we've set the background positioning to zero zero it will show the top and actually start on the top left hand corner of the image when we're looking to display something. The opacity value for the image when we load the page when we come to the page is set to 0 0.5 which is 50% and obviously we want to transition to 100% when we hover over. We use these transitioning styles as you can see we have WebKit, Moz and then just transition for the different browsers WebKit for Safari and Chrome, Moz for Firefox and transition does support is supported on the on web or oh, on Safari and Chrome as well I believe and Firefox however it's not supported yet by Internet Explorer I believe it will be Internet Explorer 10 but we've added in the other browsers for good measure as well we've set them to transition the opacity value uh, at, at 0.5 seconds so half of a second it takes to transition the opacity value and what that does is it links to the opacity value we have down here which is in the Facebook hover A style. It's important that the hover, it's the hover styling for the list element because it's applicable to the A here F that we have underneath. And again, we're shift we're placing the background image in, but you'll notice here at the end we have minus 130 pixels. And what that does is it pulls the or moves the image uh, minus 130 pixels. So it's actually moving this full color image 130 pixels up this way so it actually places it or it appears to place it over the top of where the grey image was hence that when we hover over it changes to that full colour now the reason why the opacity changes is because below it we have opacity 1 which is 100% you don't have to set it to 100% but in this example we have so that you're going from a faded grey to full colour and back again you can change the timing fairly simply by just changing these values here and increasing them to the timing you want and it really is that simple the others are all set to exactly the same the only difference with the YouTube is that we set the background image here and we haven't set it again with the hover image down here now what that does is it includes the background image and then when we hover over it it just simply changes the opacity of the existing image hence why it just changes like that and we retain part of the colour when it's left unhovered. I hope that's been fairly straightforward for you. I'll just leave it, move it back to this page. If you want to pause the video and quickly copy down that CSS, I promise it will work if you copy out exactly. However, if you do have any issues with it, feel free to email me at help at harryfin.co.uk. I'll include it in the description below along with your images if possible as long as there's not too many 
your HTML and your CSS, and I will do my best to ensure that that is uh, sent back to you with a working fix as soon as possible. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, and I hope you've uh, found it useful. If you'd like to recommend a tutorial that I do, and if I'm trying to focus on web design based ones at the moment, I will be doing some graphical tutorials, but not to probably until the end of the summer or towards the end of the summer. I am going to be focusing on some WordPress tutorials with some custom theme options coming very soon, uh, showing you how to build your own theme and what options we have available to us in the latest version of WordPress. Again, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and please feel free to contact me should you have any issues. Thanks for watching.